All right, good day, hi, and welcome. Okay, so what I've got for you here is a, a follow-up on my uh, Mark Holcomb six-string SE model. A little dust on there. It's amazing how fast the dust gets on here. Hey, check out this. There's fingerprints all over this thing. So it's been about a week now that I've had that. I think tomorrow's a week. Uh, okay, so the question was, uh, it's a lot easier for me to uh, basically answer in a video form. I got a microphone stand in the way here. Hang on. So the question was something along the lines of, what did I think of the 20 degree uh, fretboard? I'm going to try to find a spot for this camera here. You want to drum? Does that work? Don't know if that'll work. Yeah, I'd like to get the whole guitar in there. Sort of works. Okay, yeah, because this is going to be mainly a talking video anyway. But uh, the question was basically, what did I think of the 20 degree uh, fretboard radius? Now, I have three guitars that have this radius. So I have my LTD uh, EC258 8 string. I have um, the Mark Holcomb 7 string. And of course, this Mark Holcomb 6 string, which I've now had for about a year. Uh, still paying for it, but uh, yeah, definitely worth every penny. So here's what I said about the guitar. I don't know if I went into enough depth on the fingerboard. When you get a, uh, say, a compound radius fingerboard, like say on a Jackson or a Sharp L, you get like 14 to 16 degrees. So what you get is a rounder here for playing chords, which is a lot comfortable. But as you move up the fingerboard, it gets flatter for shredding, right? Now, Gibson is typically... Uh, 12 degrees the whole way so it's kind of like not the flattest thing but it's not the roundest thing either so it's good for playing chords okay for shredding uh, doing solos uh, then you've got your fenders which are like nine and a half ten degree which is pretty much it's like playing on the back of the neck you, you know what I mean like it's 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 really round so phenomenal for doing chords uh, but what that does is when you get a rounder fingerboard, when you go to do a string bend, that's where you, you run into the problems of, of fretting out. So your note dies out a little earlier than you would anticipate. And it's a little more effort to actually, you know, we're talking about that much extra effort. It's a little more effort to, um, you know, basically, uh, do a vibrato, right? So for some people, big deal. Some people, not a big deal. So when you get these guitars, it's one of the weird things about this guitar is that it is kind of a bit of a weird thing. So in all, it's like, it sounds like a Les Paul, plays like an SG, but has the scale radius of a Telecaster or a Stratocaster with that kind of a neck feel to it, like that rounder C shape. Uh, so it's not as thick as some Les Pauls, definitely not as thick as some of the other, uh, like the uh, CE line that I, I tried the other day uh, in the, when I was in the music store picking up my uh, drum kit. I tried a CE really quick, I just reached around like that, and like the neck felt like it was like a big honking baseball bat. It was like so thick. Uh, it's not like that at all. It's, this is kind of really, it's really, 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 really nice. But as soon as you get your fingers around here, that's where you start to notice the anomalies of the guitar, where uh, the best way I can say it is do yourself like a B, B minor chord up here, like, you know, uh, it, it, like a, a seven chord, B minor seven chord there. And it, that, it, it's just like, it feels like it's so flat, right? So like I said in the previous video, when you're shredding, if you're a finger tapping guy, uh, Eddie Van Halen style, I think Eddie would have loved this, uh, to be honest with you. I uh, don't know what radius is his fingerboards were, but 20 degree radius, when you get used to it, you have to live with it for a little while because it, it's unorthodox. This is like, it's like a new breed of guitar. Uh, it's the future. Because really, like every other guitar manufacturer is still trying to build you the, the best 1960s guitar, you know, that they can. It's only like Jackson, Ibanez, and even Jackson and Ibanez have a lot of traditional sounds. ESPs, you know, are, uh, you know, playing. So the ergonomics of a 20 degree fretboard, it's flat the whole way, like the whole way. So it feels like you're playing like in a classical guitar where what it does is it really makes you curl your fingers. That's a good thing. 
So when you do a legato, it just, it's a weird to get used to, but I, I find my legatos on this guitar are the cleanest because there's just nothing, you know, holding you back once you, you know, once you do a pull off, it's just, it's so clean. Uh, which clarity is, Mark Holcomb goes on about clarity all the time. You know, the clear, clearest pickups he can get, the clearest sounds he gets. Because he plays with a lot of saturation, meaning tons and tons and tons of the gain and distortion gain, that kind of stuff. And a lot of effects, which really muddies the water. This guitar handles effects phenomenally. Uh, the newer guitar is probably even better because it's not as hot a pickup, so you won't be peeking out your signal. Mind you... This is probably the better live guitar, just because of those Alpha and Omegas, because they're hotter than the Scourge and the Scarlet. But the Scourge and Scarlet might be a little bit cleaner in the studio. But that said, this guitar is really, really good when you record it. Like, you hear every little dynamic note. Uh, and I find what it is, is just because with that flat fingerboard, it just, it changes your hand position just enough that, you, again, you curl your fingers a little bit more which more curled is better. It means cleaner notes. That, that's, you know, that the flat 1960s Jimi Hendrix style and, you know, Billy Gibbons style and that stuff like that is fine, but it'll, you'll never get clean. You'll get the, the slurry, muddy notes doing that. Great for blues and stuff like that, or even classic rock, but uh, hard rock, whatever. But for really precision, you really got to get your fingers, you know, you got to do this, right? That, that, that's what your fingers should look like. You got to be playing on your fingertips. The 20 degree fretboard I find kind of allows you to do that more naturally. It's just, it's an unnatural feeling at first. So when you get, you got to live with it for, you know, like there's people that have bought this guitar and sold it almost right away saying, oh, I can't quite get into what it's about, you know. But the longer you live with this guitar, the more it makes sense of what, what it's after. And once you get really used to this guitar, it is one of those guitars that the more you play it, the less you're going to play everything else because it just works it just works really well it's just i'm not trying to oversell it again i'm not paid or anything to advertise this guitar it's just i really believe in this guitar's uh setup uh concept is it's just fantastic it might even stop you from buying other guitars because it's like when i walk into a music store it's like okay well this is the benchmark you know it's like okay well it has to be better than this and you know, like, you know, I can find similar, but I can't seem to find the exact same. So the 20 degree fretboard is a bit of an anomaly. Although I think in the future, say 10, 15 years down the line from now, all the younger players are going to be playing flat. They're probably going to be using like, you know, 30 degree rate. Like, I mean, the things are going to be like plain flat, flat, flat. You know, just like, yeah, zero degrees. That's it. <laughs> you know, it's going to be infinite. Um... But yeah, I know uh, the comment was like, uh, he found it strange. Live with it for a bit. Like, like live with it for about a good year or so, but play it a lot. And 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 what you're going to notice is that your notes are going to be a little bit cleaner. Uh, cleaner means thicker sounding notes. Uh, the other thing I notice is, again, when you do pig squeals and slides. And the other thing I know, it, 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 obviously string bends, you, it's just out, outrageous the way you can bend a string on here. But it's not just down here. Everybody thinks string bends down here, but up here. This guitar is just so crazy easy to do like first fret, you know, like really, really crazy finger bends on the first fret because of that flatness. Uh, it's weird to get used to. And like I say, the only handicap I find this guitar has is when you have to roll your fingers uh, you know really sit them flat for like say uh sweeping arpeggios not that they're harder to do but you really have to flatten out your fingers a lot more and that's probably what a lot of guys aren't you know they're, they're not they're used to a bit of a radius there so their fingers aren't going as flat and because they're not going as flat they're they're getting messy notes but when you really flatten out on this the notes are twice as clear so again live with the guitar for a little bit uh, it re will reward you. Like I really, really like uh, for my six strings, this is the best six string quality wise I've ever owned, uh, in the sense, maybe not the best playing guitar in the world, but it is a pretty darn good playing guitar. Um, but the thing that I notice is it's probably the guitar that does the bends the best, like, uh, string bends and, and slides the best. Uh, that I will say it is probably better than any other guitar I've ever played, for string bending and you know especially if you're doing those you know zach wild kind of string string beds uh 
Mark Holcomb obviously does them. Like if you, if you listen to Mark Holcomb play when, when he does his uh, string bends, you, you kind of get the idea of how much, like how easy it is for him to make those bends. You know, like he, he, there's really not a lot of resistance on that flat fingerboard. It just allows you to bend a string, you know, especially if you have a slightly heavier gauge on in a drop tuning like this. These are 10 to 52s on here in drop C. Uh, if I was in standard tuning, I'd probably just have 9 to uh, 46 or 9 to 42 or whatever they are. But uh, yeah, and I can't imagine. Like you'd bend, you'd bend the E string like up to here. <laughs> uh, so that's one thing I noticed about it, that my uh, first position chords are a lot more crisper and cleaner because, again, you tend to want to naturally curl your fingers rather than sit flat all the time. Although you can sit flat on it, but it just, it seems to be the guitar that really wants to bring things around so it's a weird like the way they got it you'd think it'd be like an ibanez type of wizard profile really really ultra flat neck but it's actually kind of a beefy neck for for what it is but i'm not as much of a a, a profile neck profile snob as i used to be because of what this guitar like again with that satin finish the smoothness of the neck, I think, makes more of a difference. If it's a little thicker, it doesn't matter. But I do notice the fretboard does make a big difference for playability. So that's pretty much my take on it, is just that your your string sliding is better and your, you know, it just seems easier to slide, like, from extreme ends of the fingerboard uh, in, a, in a shape uh, than it does with a slightly rounder, radius fingerboard and then of course the bends and the squeals the one last thing is when i when you really lay 